Bro, we got the best chapter in Jujutsu Kaisen in a while. Again. The title of this video should be Yuta Proof Everyone Wrong Once Again. Again. Because this man is just cooking and there's nothing else I can say about that. This was honestly one of the most exciting chapters as not only we got a lot of action, but we got to know a lot of information. And all those informations are regarding Yuta's domain expansion and copied curse techniques, Yuji's new soul splitting blows, as well as Sukuna's current state. We even got hope of saving Megumi again since Igruma's plan failed. And at this point, I'm actually starting to see a way for Sukuna to lose, which was something that was impossible for the past couple months. In this video, we're going to talk about the important events and informations that happened in this chapter and what are the implications for the future of the series if you enjoyed the video leave a like and subscribe let's get into it so first we get a full explanation of how yuta's domain expansion works first thing first yuta gets to choose which curse technique he wants to apply as a sure hit in this case he chose angel's jacob ladder which is a hard counter to sukuna we also learned that he has the ability to control who the sure hit is going to therefore he's only aiming for sukuna and not yuji allowing yuji to move freely and do whatever he wants in the domain so Sukuna with 4 arms still has the ability to defend himself because only 2 hands are needed for his hollow wicker basket while he can use the other 2 to defend against Rika, Yuta and Yuji. But he's still at a very big disadvantage nonetheless. Yuta then gets an infinite amount of sword around him and his opponent. For each sword he picks up is a random curse technique and he only finds that out once he gets the sword. Meaning that if he gets unlucky things could go wrong. But we know that he's a very skilled sorcerer so we know that he'll be able to do good with whatever technique he gets. Personally, i'm glad that my favorite technique is getting a lot of love because sky manipulation has been the most used and useful technique in this fight i would assume that is also yuta's favorite curse technique to use because of how useful it can be in multiple situations for example hiding his blade before a strike or simply hitting sukuna with a thin ice breaker which he cannot block we also get to see more of the curse techniques that yuta copied first we have charles with the ability to see a little bit into the future and the more he hits his opponent the further in the future he can see which he uses pretty efficiently against sukuna to dodge his blow and hit him in the face we see him use curse pitch which we already knew he had before but seeing him use that against sukuna to save yuji was actually beautiful at the end of the chapter we see yuta hit sukuna with his own cleave which surprises sukuna this could mean one of two things number one would be rika eating the last sukuna finger and number two would be rika hitting sukuna's hand that igruma severed we still do not have much confirmation but i'm still gonna go with the assumption that she needs to eat i just personally feel like it's easier to call it that moving forward this domain expansion is for sure one of the craziest in terms of design it is for sure my favorite and my number one but in terms of effect i would say that it is top three or top five i know it is broken but a lot of other domains are shown to be broken as well the reason why yuta is holding his own against sukuna right now is because not only sukuna is weakened but yuta is more skilled than a lot of those other domain users it's not because his domain is just so much better People are forgetting that Sukuna is getting jumped, he's not just fighting Yuta's domain. Which brings us to Yuji, our favorite main character. But before we get into it, I have an announcement for you. If you're looking for some good quality clothing at a good price, look no further than Anime Express. Whether you're looking for comfort or style, they would have everything you need. Literally everything from all of your favorite series. Of course they have Jujutsu Kaisen but they also have a multitude of other series. And on top of basing clothing, they have all sorts of accessories, whether it is for you or simply to decorate your house. Things such as bonnets, rings, lights, or whatever you would want. If you want to support my channel or simply get some good clothing for yourself, go over at animexpress.store. And before your purchase, don't forget to use code GODLYOMEN10 for 10% off. Hopefully you find something for you and thanks to Anime Express for sponsoring this video. During the fight, we learned that Yuji can perceive the line between Sukuna and Megumi's soul and with each blow he aims for that exactly. Every single time he hits Sukuna, Sukuna starts shaking and this is because the sponges are severing Sukuna's connection with Megumi, basically undoing everything that the bath did before. So not only Sukuna loses control over his body, but his CE is also getting reduced, and his curse energy amount is honestly probably lower than Yuta at the moment. So no matter whether he blocks the hits or not, as long as Yuji gets to connect his fist with Sukuna's body, he will get the connection. All Yuta has to do is continue bothering Sukuna, dealing damage to him, and saving Yuji. The truth is, Yuji is currently getting carried, but it's not an issue. We've seen Yuta save his life during the fight, but we also realized that the whole time Sukuna got his hands tied because
because of Yuta. And one of his free hands is being occupied by Yuta himself. He only has one hand to counter Yuji and every single time he tries to block he still takes the damage. So Yuta is playing a big role in this fight. But this doesn't take away anything from Yuji. The fact that his hacks is so crazy is actually impressive. Of course this doesn't make him the best but he's just a very good counter to Sukuna himself. Now if Yuji keeps hitting Sukuna I don't know exactly what will happen. Will Sukuna's soul completely be rejected or will Megumi simply wake up while still being in the body? Which will cause Sukuna to be nerfed just like he was when he was fighting Yuji and Maki during the calling games. And if things keep going that way with Sukuna that keeps getting nerfed and ends up getting to the same 10% he was at before, there is actually a big chance of winning. Now of course things are going a little too well so there might be things happening in the next chapters. But currently things are just beautiful and exciting. And Megumi being able to nerf Sukuna once he wakes up is actually something that has been shown before during the calling game. It was to avoid that that Sukuna had to take the bath to suppress his soul. But if his soul gets back to where it was before, the same effect might reoccur. Which is probably what Yuji is aiming for. And in that case, I'm not sure if Megumi is actually being saved. We also learned that our main characters really got way stronger during that last month. Yuta and Yuji being able to withstand cleave and heal themselves from it. Of course it is a weakened cleave but it's still very impressive coming from Yuji. One thing I also noticed is that the initial plan was really for Iguruma to participate in that jumping. I think the original plan was for Iguruma to hit Tsukuna with his domain expansion and confiscate his curse technique, as well as getting the executioner's blade. Yuta would then put all of them in the domain and only target Tsukuna with a sure hit effect. Once that's done, they would then start jumping Tsukuna and create opportunities for Higuruma to stab him. And the moment the sword connects, it will be over for him and Megumi will be freed. But since Yuta went for Kenjaku, Higuruma ended up dying before he got there. Therefore, they need to use this alternative. And that makes me think that Megumi being saved is not guaranteed. From what I'm understanding, Iguruma was the best option because he could save Megumi while killing Sukuna. That's probably the reason why they prioritized his technique over everything else. But now that he is gone, they have to use the other way. Meaning that even if they can't save Megumi, they would at least get rid of Sukuna. And they will use Megumi's soul inside of him to nerf him. But I don't know how true that is, there is no confirmation for that. This is simply my theory. But for the most part, everything that happened in the chapter is actually something that I enjoy seeing. As I said before, I think Sukuna should lose, but if he was going to lose on some bullshit way, I wouldn't like it. I wouldn't just want characters to get random power-ups in order to defeat them. To me, as long as there is something that makes sense, a strategy, and a structure to that fight, I will be satisfied. And currently, the reason why Sukuna is losing is something that makes perfect sense to me. Gojo giving Sukuna some long-lasting damage that keeps him nerfed even during this fight, because not only doesn't have his domain expansion, but his RCT output is way lower. On top of that, half of his hands and mouse are restrained because of Yuta's domain expansion. And while this is happening, he is dealing with Rika who is giving some pretty heavy blows that he can just withstand with no effort. At the same time, Yuta keeps pestering him and pressuring him with other curse techniques, especially Tina's Icebreaker which he cannot block which deals a lot of damage. And we have Yuji who keeps weakening his soul, making things worse and worse for him. That is a well thought out plan in my opinion and I don't see any issue with them winning like that. Now I know this isn't the only thing that is going to matter. I think Maki still has a role to play. I don't necessarily think that Hakari needs to make it there. It would be cool to see him, but it really doesn't mean anything. Him taking down Yurame is already something very impressive that he can do on that side. If he ends up in a draw with her, I would be satisfied. Because even though I want Hakari to play a bigger role, not even wanting him to lose, it would be cool for Yurame's character to serve some purpose. Even if things get out of hand for her, being able to sacrifice herself to restrain Hakari and prevent him to do anything else would actually be good to me as well. I just don't think Yurame should just die without helping Sukuna in any way. There are also theories about Maki going to get Nobara, which actually kind of makes sense to me. Because unless Maki wants to help Hakari against Yurame, there's only one place she can be currently, and it would be doing something important. And what else could be important aside from those fights that are going on? I don't see why she needs to be there with Gojo and Shoko, unless she serves as a bodyguard, which will be a possibility. But honestly, for once, I'm actually starting to believe that there is a way for Nobara to come back into the story, because I used to think that since she didn't come back during the calling games, it was over. But we might be surprised again in the future. Is Gojo coming back? I really don't know. I don't know how we'll feel about it. I know I'll be happy to see him, but I don't even think he's that needed currently. I feel like he played his role in the story and in the fight. But you can let me know how you feel about this in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, but only if you enjoy. Get this video to 300 likes and I'm trying to get to 2000 subscribers. But only sub to me if you enjoyed the content that I put out. On your screen, you have everything you would like. If you really like this video, on your screen, you can see some others that you will enjoy. Thanks
Thanks for the support and I will see you all next time. Peace.